Virtual reality has been a buzzword for a couple of years now, and I'm sure many of you have already tried this technology. Aside from entertainment, VR is being used increasingly for training and simulations. So next, we will quickly cover the whys and hows. And what we're really excited about is the very new possibility of high-quality wireless VR. While we still love PC-connected headsets for their amazing graphic quality, we're excited about VR goggles that you can throw into your bag or ship to a client in a small box. No expensive computer or wall-mounted sensors required. We have two options for wireless VR, fresh on the market in 2019, the Oculus Quest and the Vive Focus. But first things first, we have prepared a few steps for assembling a signal light. Using different types of written and visual aids, we've made it super simple for the user to understand the step-by-step -step process involved. Each element has to be picked up in a particular order and an action is required, such as connecting it to another part in a particular way. If tools are required, in this case an electric drill, no problem. We have that ready and working in VR as well. If you need to train people to perform certain procedures, VR might be the right technology for you. Complex actions where a variety of steps need to be done in a particular order or when multiple parts need to be arranged in a certain way are great for VR. In all these cases, the trainee can repeat any training sequence for as long as necessary without access to physical facilities or equipment. All that is needed is a VR headset that can fit into your bag. This takes us to the next topic, VR hardware. The industry is not so young anymore, so users, developers and manufacturers are finally beginning to see their dreams and desires converge. And this convergence is wireless VR. But other options are also available, so talk to your VR developer about which headset is right for you. And here we are at step four, the right VR developer. Rule number one, test something they have already done. Are the interactions smooth and intuitive? Does their visual style fill you with joy and make you wish you could stay in VR just a little longer? If yes, you might have found your developer. First and foremost, the developer needs to understand the product or the procedure that you want to recreate in VR. They will then create a storyboard with all the steps involved. You'll also need to provide 3D files of your products. Almost any 3D file format will do. If there are any objects for which you do not have a digital file, your developer will generate a 3D model based on photos or technical specifications. As soon as you give the go-ahead on the storyboard and send the 3D files, the developer can start. There are two main parts to the process of creating a VR app. Preparing the 3D assets and programming. Workflows will vary from studio to studio, but preparing the assets for VR first involves cleaning up and optimizing the geometry. This includes rebuilding parts that are too dense to be displayed inside a portable VR headset and cleaning up layers. Because remember, the original 3D files were most likely intended for fabrication. Depending on the level of realism that you're after, another important part is creating textures and texture maps. A software called a game engine brings together the 3D objects with programming. Yes, it is the same software used to develop video games. Coding is mainly used to enable and define interactions, as well as to control the flow of events. In our example with the control lamp, a series of object highlights and talk bubbles appear and disappear to guide you through the steps. This means that the software is tracking which objects you are currently touching or holding and is helping you along by displaying the right clues and instructions. Coding can also be used to control the appearance of some objects and for special effects. The environment where the training takes place can play an important role. Here we designed a production hall, but in the case of other training sequences, the developer can create appropriate and realistic surroundings. Some companies spend large amounts of money flying people to training centers or flying engineers out to clients. With the VR app, you can invite people to join live sessions or Q&As from any location in the world. And in some cases, shipping them a headset might be cheaper than a plane ticket. A participant forgot something? 
they can play a recording of the session or practice using a step-by-step -step interactive tutorial. VR can be both exciting and intimidating. A lot of aspects have to be taken into account, from development costs to hardware cost to deployment strategy and the company's short and long-term return on investment. And here we are back to an earlier point. The right developer should be a reliable and knowledgeable partner in all of this. They should be able to provide a project plan with proof of concepts, milestones and checkpoints. If you would like to find out more or have any questions, we'll be happy to chat with you.